Hello and welcome to my first theme week, which is all about making you a happier person, less depressed and feeling less anxiety in life. I will be sharing six tools, six techniques from my coaching and workshops to become that better person that you may want to be. And I'd like to begin with a metaphor. Close your eyes while listening to my voice. I'd like to, for you to imagine a garden. It's your garden. It's filled with flowers of various colors. They're all blooming and flourishing in your garden. And you're so proud because you are the gardener. One day it starts to rain. You're happy because rain is good for your garden. And then it rains for another day and another day. And then it keeps on raining. And after about two weeks, you start to get worried because your garden is not looking very happy. It goes on for four weeks, no eight weeks, no 12 weeks, no 20 weeks. And now when you look at your garden, you fill your eyes with tears because it's all muddy. It's dead. It's rotten. This garden is your brain, my friend. And the rain coming down is something called cortisol. Cortisol is your stress reaction hormone. Now, all these beautiful flowers of various colors are your neurotransmitters, neuropeptides, hormones like serotonin, dopamine, endorphins, vasopressin, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. And they're all taking a beating thanks to the raining in your garden. You go all sad and you go, I hope it stops raining. And one day, it stops raining in your garden. Within about two to four weeks, all your flowers, beautiful serotonin, dopamine, endorphins, and estrogen and progesterone, everything starts to come up again and flourish. Your brain is exactly the same thing. One of the first things I do with my clients is I have a look at their cortisol situation, their stress level situation in life. And I do this by a tool called the cortisol map. And I have added a link to it down here so you can download it and do this yourself. The entire day today, I'll be sharing stories on stuff that you can put into your cortisol map, that I put into my cortisol map, and how you can solve things that stress you out. Are you ready? I know I am, because I know what this means for you. I am so excited. I've posted the first tool, Asselinsta TV. Go and have a look at that. Let's get this going, shall we? David, can you move the sofa? Certainly! When my wife used to ask me to help her to move furniture in the house, it got me stressed. So I changed the perspective and said this to me instead. This is good for cardiovascular training. Moving things. Builds muscles. So just changing the perspective from this to this moved it from stress to not being stressful. Ask yourself what you can change the perspective of in your life. Good morning and welcome to day two of the theme of making you a happier person, less depressed and less anxious. Today I'm giving you the second most important tool when I cracked my and hacked my own depression and it's called break the pattern. If I were to say that my phone number is 00046705424242, how would you remember that? Repetition, right? Right, right, yes. Repetition. Now imagine if somebody said this to me. Hey, you've got big eyes, David. A bit too big for your skull, actually. It looks a bit weird. Then my brain would go like, do I have big eyes? And I look myself in the mirror and I go like, I have, dude, I have big eyes. And then somebody looks at me strangely and I would think, I do have big eyes. Oh my God. And then my brain would go, he seems to be thinking about his big eyes a lot these days. We better focus on that. And your brain starts repeating it as much as often as like, the big eyes, it's a big thing. We should be thinking about the big eyes more. We should be writing stories and poems about those big eyes. How do we then stop that happening? The only way you can remember that a person said that you had big eyes is by repeating it. So here's the technique. It's called break the pattern. And it's most powerful if you use it immediately after the input that you got. So if you receive any kind of input, you saw a film, you saw a movie, you saw an image, you heard something, somebody said something, and you don't want that to stick in your head, you need to break the pattern as soon as possible. And the way to do that is Distract yourself, do a mathematical equation, stand up jumping, start singing, call a friend. Just think about something else that is even more provocative to your brain. Distract yourself from the thought. Because if you do that, your brain will go, hmm, strange, the, the big eye thing doesn't seem to be that important. We're not fulfilling the full loop. It seems to be breaking all the time. Maybe, maybe we should just stop thinking about that. And uh, your brain, that little part of your brain, that memory will then fade away because it doesn't seem important. 
Now, if you have stuff in your brain, which you've already repeated 100,000 times over years, the thing to hack that is to do exactly the same thing, just takes a little bit longer. So the next time you bring up that thought that you already thought 100,000 times, when you think that, boom, break it. Brain goes like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think it now, okay? Well, boom, you break it. And then your brain goes, when you're hungry, I'm gonna sneak it past you. And you go like, break it, break it, break it. <laughs> Now, when you're sleepy, I'm gonna break it past you, boof, and you break it again. Keep on breaking the pattern over and over again, because that will signal to your brain that the information you're trying to repeat is not important, and it'll stop focusing on it for you. To me, break the pattern was absolutely, absolutely crucial to cracking my depression. If you don't want shit to put into your brain, break the pattern as soon as humanly possible. Now in the comments, why don't you share the stuff that you've done to break your patterns, like ideas inspire each other, and start using this immediately. It's time to reprogram your brain, take charge of it. You should control it. Nothing breaks my patterns better than hitting the gym. And with me today, I have my coach, Lucas Johannesson. Just look at this body, right? Oh! <laughs> He's a pure Viking. All right, let's do it, Lucas. Getting a haircut and a beard trim is a brilliant way of breaking the pattern. I don't know really why, but it works tremendously. So let's go. It makes me happy. Dolphy, one of the best ones in Sweden. Are you happy with the cut? Yes, of course. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Another way to break a pattern is to meet new people. This is Berim. Hey. Hello. He's a photographer and we're doing photos outside today. And it's good fun. Got all my different changes here. Welcome to day three of this theme week, which is all about increasing your happiness, reducing your depression and sense of anxiety. And we have come to tool number three, which is triggers. You see, your neural pathways in your brain depend on one trigger to launch into a sensation of memories and emotions maybe you want to go to or you don't want to go to. A trigger can launch you into happiness. Listen to a song or you meet a person or you go to a particular place and that launches you into happiness. Those triggers, they're good to know which they are. The same goes for triggers that makes you depressed or the triggers that makes you feel anxiety or triggers that makes you go into a bad behavior. Like, for instance, behaviors like consuming too much sugar. <gasps> and then you find something sweet, maybe a cookie or some sweets. And that then triggers your need to eat sugar by just seeing them. So what you should do in this case is just clean out your entire house from sweets and just go like, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna do this anymore. Just away with the sweets and then you go straight off and you throw them in the major dustbin. I'm so hard on my kids on this that if they don't eat their snacks on Friday, I just throw everything away so they can't eat it on Sunday or Saturday. All right, next thing. Some may be triggered by particular apps in their phone or maybe somebody that you're following. Uninstall the app if it triggers a bad behavior, anxiety or depression, or unfollow the people that you follow on social media that brings out a bad behavior, anxiety or depression in you. See to it that you follow people who make you happy, see to it that your apps that make you happy. But how about the phone then? What happens with that? A trigger for some may just be having your mobile phone close to you. Did you know that your cognitive abilities actually go down if you just have the phone in a close proximity to yourself. So when going to bed, you really want your brain to relax as much as possible. So you put your phone in a different room. Having it close to you can actually trigger yourself becoming more alert. Well, that's individual though, but mobile phones can definitely trigger. You know what? It actually triggers me a lot. So I chose to not have it as much and replaced it with a smartwatch instead. With a smartwatch, the only thing I really can do is receive messages and call people. And that removes the trigger for the mobile phone for me. Even buying things with your credit card or online can uh, be a trigger which then makes you happy momentarily because you bought something so you want to buy something more and you want to buy something more and that can lead to buying a lot of things so not buying that thing to begin with could be the trigger in this case what i then could recommend is allowing somebody else to take charge of your account for the moment or allowing somebody else to give you a particular sum that you can use every week and just have it that way 
until you wean yourself out from that trigger of buying things for the case of trying to create happiness in life. You see, there's thousands of things that could be our triggers. What's important in life is figuring out the triggers that makes us into a better version of ourselves and try to create those as often as possible. And the triggers that create the worst version of ourselves to avoid them or accept them. What I mean with that is that if a particular song puts you into a triggered mode of anxiety, well, stay clear of the song is one way. But the other way is as soon as that song comes on, just acknowledge that it is a trigger. Breathe through it and enjoy that you grew and learned from the experience. The more often you can be conscious about the trigger, the less it'll cause you pain. Hey, some weird thing that triggers me is papers. I don't know why, but they, they give me panic. I love a digital lifestyle, so I'm getting out of here. Today is a super special day because I will be sharing something with you which I have never ever shared with anybody else before. And it comes down to that I want you to be able to accomplish things. If you can't accomplish things, you can't move into a greater happiness in life. You can't move away from depression and anxiety. Now, there are four ways to get things done in life. Number one, willpower. It requires a tremendous amount of brain power if you have to use willpower a lot in life. So you shouldn't use that too much, only when necessary. Second one is motivation. It requires quite a lot of brain power as well, so it should be used in a limited amount in life. Then you have routines. They don't require as much brain power, so as much as possible in life should be made into routines. And routines, when done often enough, become habits. And habits require practically no brain power at all and just happen out of themselves. So life should be designed to have as many habits as possible, routines, and then rely on motivation when needed and willpower when it's absolutely needed. And I'd like to share with you the thing that I said that I haven't shared with anybody before. is 24 hours of my life. My habits, routines, and rituals during these 24 hours. Because it seems like I get quite a lot of done, lot done in my life. Just last week, I recorded 50 videos for JP University. We did uh, four big keynotes. I constantly write scripts and record 12 TikToks a week. I write a book, I run three companies, I've got the JP Manor to handle. I've got a family with three kids, and I guess that's just half of everything that I do. And I would never, ever, 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 ever be even close to managing all that if I didn't have my routines and my habits. And I would absolutely not be able to do it and still be a happy person, an even growing person, a thriving person, a human who loves his life. Because all of that you can get done, but it'll make you super depressed and super sad if you don't have the right routines, rituals and habits. So today, my friend, is an exclusive day with a look into my life and the routines and habits that you can copy for yourself. Awesome! Good morning. My first ritual of the day is to spend one minute being grateful for stuff that happened yesterday, then decide one self-leadership tool I'm gonna practice today, and one thing I'm gonna give people today. Like a smile to you, for instance. Morning. The next part of my daily routine is to hit the cold lake, have a cold shower. It's four degrees Celsius. Freaking awesome. How about that, cameraman? Next routine is to hit the gym. Either I go here in Vestros, I go to my home gym. I plan to go seven days a week and I'll just skip the days that I can't. Here we go. Legs. <laughs> Next routine is having fun with my team at least once a day. Hiding in the hallway somewhere. Oh, gotcha. Here we got him. <laughs> My next routine is not whistling with the birds, but taking a walk in the sun every lunch. You see, getting out in the sun is probably one of the most important routines I have. And this is why. It is time for this day's final routine, and that's eight hours and 30 minutes of sleep. I just put my daughter to bed. And uh, hey, I hope you've had a good day and that you've learned something from the routines. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Welcome to day five of this theme week. We will be focusing down here. What you eat impacts how you feel. You see, lately, during the last two or three years, so many studies and so many reports have been coming back that the gut bacteria has a direct connection to your brain and your mental health. Studies have been shown that some people who believe they are depressed are depressed because of what they're eating 
and not anything else. So what you are eating is affecting you more than you may ever, ever understand at the moment. Today's stories will be all about this. What you shouldn't be eating and what you should be eating in order to improve your gut bacteria, to improve your serotonin production and to have a balanced mood in life. Because if you eat too much sugary foods, your body and brain will be going like this and that will put you out of flow over and over again in your day. This is an absolute core skill for a good self-leadership, healthy mind, healthy body and just feeling happy and content in life. Good morning, this is my breakfast today, or not breakfast at all, because I start this day by reducing inflammation by doing intermittent fasting, which means that I ate last night and I'm not eating until lunch. That's a 16 hour window of not eating. Way, here we go. I am baking. I'm taking my family on a small picnic and I've made keto bread. This has no carb, but very few carbohydrates in it. Mm. This theme week has come to an end. Do you know why I do it? Do you know why I do that? Why I do social media? Why I share so much? because I genuinely care about you. I want you to have the best possible version of a life there is, because life is created from the perception of what's out there. How can I say that? Well, I come from a life where I, I spent 19 years in a depressed state, in a sad state. And since I cracked my own depression six years ago, I have days where I get goosebumps and tears from the emotional reactions of life. Life is so freaking amazing. And I'm gonna give that to everybody. I know I can, I already give it to people. And I think it's so unfair, sorry for swearing, but that this is not taught in school. So I call this the communication revolution. I wanna give all kids and youths the knowledge how to rewire your brain to create the best version of yourself and of your life. And that's why I do this. I care about you, truly.